Embark on an unforgettable journey with a 1943 movie that takes you deep into the heart of World War II espionage. Follow the protagonist as he navigates through a perilous web of danger and deceit, encountering a cast of intriguing characters along the way. As the plot unfolds, you'll experience a roller coaster of emotions, from moments of humor to shocking revelations and poignant scenes that tug at your heartstrings. Throughout the movie, there are standout performances that leave a lasting impression. From the enigmatic figures he encounters to the allies and adversaries he must discern, each character adds depth and complexity to the story. As you watch, you'll find yourself drawn into their world, rooting for some and questioning the motives of others. Reflecting on the impact of this movie, you may find yourself recalling cherished memories or personal experiences that resonate with its themes. Whether it's a connection to history, a fascination with espionage, or simply the thrill of a well-crafted narrative, Journey into Fear offers something for everyone. So sit back, relax, and immerse yourself in the suspense and intrigue of this classic film. Let its twists and turns captivate you as you embark on this unforgettable cinematic journey. Colonel Hackey steals the show as usual, cutting a wide swath in this tongue-in-cheek WW2 spy drama. With Wells delivering a big slice of ham in his few minutes on screen, the film has the look of lots of ad-lib in the production process. It's great entertainment, and Colonel Hackey certainly is the type of guy you would enjoy having a drink with. This confused early noir thriller, despite fine cinematography, presents America's entry into the Second World War. Howard Graham, an American munitions engineer, along with his wife, finds themselves in Istanbul en route for home. Amidst German agents attempting to assassinate him, Colonel Hackey, the head of the Turkish secret police, assists Graham to escape. But the Nazis are hot on their trail. Though good enough to watch and enjoy, this film rides heavily on Wells' reputation as the uncredited director and some perfunctory early film noir elements. The plot is riddled with loose ends. While there are hints of a loose relationship between Graham and his wife and the exotic locations are convincingly evoked, the film fails to create real tension and ultimately feels like a mismatch. Wells' performance as Hackey is surprisingly wooden, lacking the sinister edge one might expect. Despite its flaws, any film involving Wells must be considered at least somewhat interesting. The dark cinematography is atmospheric, especially in the chase scenes, and the hints at a looseness in Graham's relationship with his wife are surprising and interesting. Not an uninteresting film, but definitely a bit of a mess. In the development phase, Ben Hecht was assigned for scripting while David Hempstead was set to produce. Initially, Fred Astaire was considered for the lead role. Later options included Robert Montgomery and Fred McMurray. During filming, co-stars Orson Welles and Dolores Del Rio were involved in a long-standing affair. However, Del Rio ended the relationship soon after the movie's release. Despite claims by critics and biographers regarding narration and pre-credit sequences, the version aired on British television lacks these elements. In this film, Frank Riedick, known for voicing the shadow in early 1930s films, is credited for the quirky socialist role, a unique credit among his works. Interestingly, Orson Welles, the producer of this movie, later voiced the shadow on the radio. Ruth Warwick, playing Howard Graham's wife in this film, had previously portrayed the same role in Orson Welles' Citizen Kane. Before her film roles, Warwick collaborated with Welles on the radio in the Mercury Theater of the Air. Joseph Cotton's escape from a car in the movie features music borrowed from Arco's King Kong. Orson Welles, a fan of incorporating snippets from various scores, had a similar plan for The Lady from Shanghai, but the producers opted for a melodramatic score, much to his disappointment. The connections between the cast, the use of familiar music, and the shared history among the actors add layers to this film, making it a unique piece in the cinematic landscape of its time. In discussions surrounding the film, it's noted that studio executives initially favored Michelle Morgan for the lead role, but Orson Welles advocated for his girlfriend Dolores Del Rio, who ultimately secured the part after heated debates. Interestingly, Richard Bennett, previously seen in Wells's The Magnificent Ambersons, portrays the ship's captain without dialogue, relying solely on expressive laughter. At one point in the production process, Mitchell Morgan was considered for a starring role, with Robert Stevenson lined up to direct. These insights shed light on the dynamics and decisions shaping the cast and crew of the film. In his sole feature film appearance, Frank Riedick played a noteworthy role in a film that has left a lasting impression on film noir enthusiasts. 
Jack Durant, best known in the film noir genre, particularly among Orson Welles fans, portrayed the suave and distant gambler Gogo Martel in Journey into Fear alongside Dolores Del Rio. This film marked a distinct chapter in Durant's career. Everett Sloan, who shared the screen with Orson Welles in Citizen Kane and The Lady from Shanghai, found himself in another Welles production, Journey into Fear. This placement in Welles' cinematic universe occurred between the aforementioned classics and Sloan's later role in Prince of Foxes, another film featuring Welles. Sloan's journey through these films showcased his versatility within the Walesian realm. The narrative of Journey into Fear unfolds within the shadows of film noir, with Durant and Sloan contributing their talents to a production that holds its own amidst the notable works of Wells. The movie stands as a pivotal point in their filmography, connecting Durant's suave presence and Sloan's versatile acting between two Walesian milestones. In late August 1942, RKO postponed the movie's release due to negative feedback from critics. Orson Welles, who had a role in the film, agreed to edit the last reel and shoot additional scenes as part of his settlement with the studio. He added Joseph Cotton's voiceover and created the pre credit sequence. While many believe Orson Welles directed large portions of the film, he stated in this as Orson Welles that he only acted in it, crediting Norman Foster as the director. Richard Bennett, known for his role in The Magnificent Ambersons, struggled with his final film role due to health issues. Wells showing patience cast Bennett as the ship's captain without any dialogue. In the opening credits, a disclaimer asserts the fictional nature of the characters and events depicted in this photoplay, disavowing any resemblance to real persons. Notably, co-stars Orson Welles and Frank Redick both portrayed the shadow on radio and appeared in Welles' infamous 1938 radio broadcast of The War of the Worlds. Following the film's production, its editor, Mark Robson, transitioned to directing, helming Peyton Place in 1957. Coincidentally, Ruth Warwick, who portrays Stephanie Graham, later starred in the television adaptation of Peyton Place in 1964. Across different films, certain characters can maintain a consistent essence despite being portrayed by different actors. Take, for example, the character of Colonel Hackey. In various cinematic adaptations, he's depicted as a smart and mysterious figure who guides the main character through challenges. This continuity helps viewers understand his importance in the story. Even with different actors, Colonel Hackey's blend of strength and determination stays the same. This connection enriches the overall viewing experience and shows the timeless nature of the original storytelling. So, Colonel Hackey's appeal goes beyond individual performances, leaving a lasting impression on the movies. During the filming of the 1943 movie Journey into Fear, director Norman Foster had a terrifying experience. One day, while shooting a scene on a dock, a sudden storm erupted, causing chaos on set. Amidst the chaos, Foster's assistant director tragically drowned. The incident left a somber shadow over the production, reminding everyone of the dangers inherent in filmmaking. Starring Joseph Cotton and Orson Welles, Journey into Fear follows an American engineer who becomes embroiled in espionage and danger while on a business trip to Turkey. Adapted from Eric Ambler's novel, the film delivers a tense and gripping narrative, keeping audiences on the edge of their seats throughout. Despite the tragic event during filming, Journey into Fear received critical acclaim upon its release. Its suspenseful plot, coupled with stellar performances from the cast, cemented its place as a classic in the film noir genre. But behind the scenes, the loss of the assistant director serves as a sobering reminder of the risks involved in bringing stories to life on the silver screen. The 1943 movie Journey into Fear holds a somber piece of trivia. During its production, Orson Welles, who both starred in and co-directed the film, faced significant creative differences with the studio. This conflict led to Welles being removed from the project, resulting in substantial alterations to the final product. The unfortunate clash underscores the challenges often faced in the collaborative process of filmmaking, even with seasoned professionals like Welles involved. Despite the setback, the movie managed to maintain a semblance of its intended vision. However, the incident serves as a poignant reminder of the complexities inherent in the industry where artistic visions can sometimes be compromised for various reasons. Journey into Fear stands as a testament to the tumultuous nature of filmmaking where even acclaimed talents like Wells aren't immune to the challenges that arise.